surrender as a matter of fact all of us are like beggars at the master's door having a begging bowl in hand which the master readily fills but when the bowl is already full with things other than spirituality the question of getting anything from him does not arise at all for anything poured into it will flow out at once the primary thing for us to do is therefore to make ourselves empty of all these so that it may be filled up with master's grace but it is a matter of pity that i find all my warnings going unheeded few seem to be trying to develop that amount of capability in themselves the whole atmosphere is surcharged with the strongest divine force can liberation ever be so easy and cheap it is definitely the time when everyone should give his entire attention to it setting aside all other things and feelings i do not thereby mean to induce you to give up your worldly living discarding everything including your responsibilities and obligations but only to give yourself up to your master in a spirit of surrender availing of the time as best as you can the master does a lot for you even without your knowledge to inspire you with the true feelings required for your spiritual uplift but then there must be a true response from your side too you must promote within him the intensity of feeling which might compel him to push you on and on that is as a matter of fact your part in the enterprise and for that you have to develop intense love and devotion See, the point of uh, uh, Vivek, yes. the point we have to notice is uh, yoga, uh, if you read Sir's article on attitudes, he talks about sincerity. Sincerity means entire attention. Yoga, whatever you are doing, like, like suppose you are reading now his book, uh, Silent Speaks, the whole being should be uh, involved in that suppose you uh, that means uh, your will power that means uh, your will that next 10 minutes i'll be reading about his book that will should be your uh, mental will power should be there and your uh, uh, feeling should be there you should be attracted to what you are doing your heart also should be there and your cognition your um, thought also should be there thought should be there this thing should be there understanding also should be there uh, thought and understanding can take similarly and then there should be love also uh, you should feel happy that uh, your mind uh, the thoughts about the master are uh, uh, manifesting in your mind and you your mind should feel happy that the thoughts of master uh, are getting manifested in the mind so that feeling you should welcome that feeling you should feel happy when thoughts about the master enter your mind that can be taken as a kind of a love actually so you 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 should have a feeling that the thought of the master which is manifesting in your mind is a pleasant feeling and and you would like to continue that feeling so that can be taken as a kind of a beginnings of uh, cultivating love actually love and if all these things are there that means your will your feeling your understanding and love then you are giving your entire attention to it setting aside all other things and feelings so uh, now temporarily at least now when we are thinking about it when your mind is free from any desire or ill will you can think that you are uh, giving your entire attention to it 
and suppose you do your cleaning properly and then you are uh, getting rid of this uh, uh, raga dvesha liking and disliking it is easy to give our entire attention to it because if you have any uh, uh, liking or uh, towards anything in this world i mean uh, 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 attachment to anything either politics or cinema or games or and when you have liking things which are opposite to that liking you will have aversion to it automatically it will be there suppose you like one political party automatically you dislike another political party which is against that suppose you are attached to hindus you will be automatically having a um, aversion to people who are not hindus so like and dislike will be there if that is there uh, you will not be able to give entire attention so that can be got rid of by proper cleaning actually so the point we have to take here is that um, entire attention is the idea which you must understand and then try to bring it into practice it is a training only you have to train yourself like right. when when we say that oh master the word the real goal of human life we have to train our mind to get accustomed to that reality now the mind is only uh, gives value to what we feel or believe as real things and since uh, it is a such a subtle thing your uh, senses cannot grasp the presence of god and your mind also cannot um, uh, cannot imagine what is the nature of god so it is not true or real for the mind so that's why not not give value to god in your heart but when you read these books and then uh, if you contemplate and then read the scriptures read babu ji's books at least you then you then you feel that uh, the the entire uh, uh, bliss is present in us only and uh, that when that understanding comes then uh, you have to train your mind to get adjusted to that reality uh, re- by repeatedly thinking about it as often as possible right. so that is how we have to practice actually you got the idea no vivek uh, yes sir i got it yeah so repeatedly we have to uh, uh, adjust our mind yeah. to the reality that god is the you know real goal of human life that is the idea and then uh, whatever you are doing you are doing meditation or cleaning uh, you have to give full attention to it even when you are doing your office work you have to think that this is uh, the order of the master i am doing the work as a duty and when you are doing the duty you have to give full attention to that office work then it becomes a constant process correct every yeah. process you are doing you should give full attention to it yes. there is nothing like uh, trivial or anything about it every activity entire attention has to be given yes got it then uh, you will start uh, you will start realizing that your mind becomes more and more peaceful more and more uh, it seems to come under your control actually yes sir yes uh, in one of the talks uh, revert sir has also said that uh, if you are doing activity say for example you are uh, walking on the road or exercising that time you are actually focusing on that activity so i think somebody had asked constant remember do we keep on remembering the master all the time huh. it is more uh, when you uh, do that activity you think that master is doing that activity so you'll focus on the activity itself and it also not take the impact of activity upon your psyche so in that okay. sense no uh, the, the the this question was posed to me he says suppose you are doing surgery uh-huh. and he says at that time you think that master you are thinking about the master in surgery you'll uh, harm the patient because you will not be either able to do the surgery properly or think about the master two right. things you cannot do so before doing a work you, you you just think once that master in you is doing the operation master in you is seeing the patient and then jump into that activity totally involved be involved in that activity so that is the correct way because right. mind can do only one thing at a time it cannot do two things at a time it can only entertain one thought at a time 
So uh, before doing, you 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 dedicate the, the uh, like suppose you are now doing an office work. You can say that your office work involves about three hours of uh, activity. So now you uh, before plunging into the activity, you just mentally think that I'll dedicate these three hours of work uh, to my master. That one minute thought is enough. Then you plunge into the work. At that time, during the time of doing your work, you should not think about the master. But the suggestion which you have given before the work has begun, that is the correct suggestion. And that suggestion will be acted upon by the subconscious mind. So that is the way constant goodness has to be practiced. And after the activity is over, our thought okay. naturally comes back. Automatically, the subconscious mind uh, thought about the master will come into your conscious mind. Yes. If you have done it with little bit of practice, of course. I mean, yeah. uh, the more uh, efficient you become in practice, what happens if you are uh, practicing correctly? Uh, if you do this technique uh, of constant remembrance, the moment the work is over, Naturally, the thought of the master will come uh, when you're in a relaxed and free state of mind. When you have no other work to do, automatically it comes to your conscious mind. Automatically, you, it becomes natural for you to think about master. I mean, you feel absorbed in the, in his presence. Yes. A kind of peace or tranquility will be there. That is nothing but the presence of master. Yes. So, but that requires uh, concentrating uh, on the all the methods sincerely, consistently, then uh, that skill comes into play. Yes. So, should okay. you have had, uh, surrender uh, doubts? It is good that you like to have the darshana of the Mahapurusha saints. Better would it be to try to have the darshan of yourself alone? You say that you do not want to have originality instantaneously because it might be non-durable. Well, better leave this to me alone. As a general rule, the spiritual journey is covered by stages taken up one after the other. If I neglect to take into account your capacity, how can I impart training to the point? Please do not be afraid. There is neither the question of leaving the heart, the hearth and home, nor of any danger to life. You say that you have surrendered yourself. But again, you say that you doubt whether you do it fully or not. That is ambiguous. When you have surrendered, the question of doubt does not arise at all. So please give up doubting. When the thought of cooperation springs up in the Abhyasi's mind, he has come up to the first state of surrender. Be bold enough to make up your mind for anything. Step in with a strong will and your success shall be sure. You think your worldly responsibility is to be a hindrance on your path, but that is a grossly mistaken notion. We have to go along taking both the sides together. That is the world and the divine side by side. My master was an ideal in this respect and I am also following in his footsteps. Vairagya does not in any way mean the neglect of duty, whether in respect of the world or of the divine. This statement uh, is not very well understood. You say that you do not want to have originality instantaneously because it might be non-durable. Uh, that means uh, that Abhyasi has written a letter to Babaji that uh, I don't want uh, realization instantly because he, he, he has got a doubt that it may you know okay. become evanescent and slip away from his mind. Okay. So that was the doubt of the person okay. uh, which we can uh, infer from the letter which Babuji has said. But Babuji gives an answer for that question. Okay. He says we go through stages actually. Mm. That is true because mind uh, several places he has written that uh, uh, I cannot give you reality straight away because uh, one thing is you will not be able to appreciate it. Second is you are 
if I suddenly take you to the highest stage, your nervous system may not be capable of withstanding that force actually. Right. Because uh, 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 there are two things important here, which uh, was neglected by majority of the people and which sir uh, was very, very, uh, gave a lot of emphasis on uh, uh, owning up of the condition, you know. That means you, when you sit in meditation, when you enter into prayerful mood and when, you are, when your mind is absorbed uh, on the object of meditation, then you know you, uh, you get a very sublime uh, state of consciousness uh, will manifest in your mind and you feel very happy during that time because uh, uh, you are uh, absorbed in the essence of happiness itself. But then... Uh, when you come back from that state, if you don't make an eff effort to adjust your mind so that that state starts percolating in your behavior, in your talking, in your, uh, in your interaction with the world, your behavior should reflect that state. So that requires what is called molding, which is a constant effort on your part to train your mind to allow that experience which you had in meditation to get reflected in your thinking and behavior. And once it gets completely reflected in your behavior, then you can say that that condition which as a, as a blessing from the master has now molded your mind to display that condition naturally. So that's called owning up of the condition. So, so that requires time. And uh, th that can be fast or slow depending upon the aspiration you have for freedom or, or spiritual progress, actually. So if the, your aspiration is intense, that, uh, that can be very fast. If the aspiration is slow, it will take time. But uh, if you are transformed, then you are, a, uh, then you are a gift for the whole humanity. Everybody around you will get benefited, actually. Automatically, even without your effort also. Right. So, uh, sir has made a lot of effort to drive home this point about the molding business. In fact, uh, we had one, one of the first seminars was only about this. Molding is a uh, preceptor business or something. That was a seminar was there. So, molding is, uh, you can take it as a kind of a constant remembrance. You, you sit in meditation in the morning. You, uh, when you try to brood about the condition, Certain uh, you, uh, even though uh, that uh, state of mind is not related to general cognition, which a person is aware uh, due to the interaction with the world through sense organs, we get a lot of uh, our uh, psychological content is related to the world and uh, sensory interaction with the world. So, but this kind of experience or impedance when your mind touches God, uh, sometimes uh, this is a phenomenal logical feeling. Feeling will be there. Sometimes you may not find words to, uh, to describe it to others. Mm -hmm. That is a problem in spirituality. Uh, but then uh, you try to brood and then try to put it in... Uh, a language which, whichever is possible, then that forms your diary actually. And that uh, condition should be, uh, you try to uh, see that your mind gets adjusted to that condition. Suppose you have a feeling that, uh, that uh, you are inseparably linked to the master and you, your job is to, you're a servant of God, that feeling comes. So that feeling of uh, devotion or sub, that you are a servant of God should be, uh, your mind should be trained to get adjusted to that reality and it should st start getting exhibited in your uh, thinking and behavior and all that. Right. So that is uh, the thing actually. So so uh, that's why it, 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 uh, uh, the progress is stages by stages slowly. At each stage we have... In the training program, we talk about the four stages through which a person goes. So the four stages can be faster or slower depending upon your aspiration. Yes. Sir, uh, can I can I have a small query? Can I, sir? Uh, 
the you it is said the nervous system doesn't support uh, sudden rise of the huh. why does the nervous system doesn't support sir uh, nervous any... system actually what happens the uh, nervous system is a very uh, i mean very beautiful and uh, extraordinarily complex thing you know the there mm -hmm. it is got about uh, 86 billion uh, neurons and yes, then each neuron has got connection to 1000 to 10000 dendritic connections will be there all the connections when if you can measure it they will be larger than uh, the number of galaxies or stars in the whole universe so it is an extraordinarily complex thing so yes, all your thinking behavior and all is uh, uh, done in a very uh, extraordinarily wonderful way by various nervous networks actually and uh, those networks are involved in your feelings and behavior and uh, they are generally uh, uh, those networks are very strongly uh, connected actually so when a new thought comes which uh, uh, which has to override all the previous networks which are involved with fear or anxiety or worry and all that uh, it will not be possible the the whole structure may collapse actually so it has to be done slowly, very, very slowly. So you do constant remembrance, slowly the, the networks, uh, you know, start molding and changing this thing. So it is all science now. Everybody knows about it. Uh, like when the child is developing, uh, whatever is, uh, when he goes to school and all that, certain networks concerned with maths or physical skills, they become... Uh, uh, matured and that becomes a habit actually. So okay. our habitual way of thinking uh, is linked to very strongly uh, uh, stable networks and uh, like suppose your uh, like caste feeling or a regional feeling is there. That feeling is uh, subserved by a network which is very strongly embedded and very powerfully connected. So you cannot escape that uh, this thing. So suppose if master, if he uses his full power, the nervous system cannot withstand it. Okay. Mm. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Should I read that, sir? Ah, you will go next longing. Longing. Uh, your offer, uh, your letter offered me greatest pleasure. I feel some lover has started thinking of this insignific insignificant being. It is not, however, a small thing for me. My services to you may perchance be of a nature which might promote in your heart the growth of longing. But both you and I have to wait for that. Peace is transmitted from heart to heart. If you have not started meditation yet, please do so now. May God bless you. I do not want to tell you much about myself since we are mere telling drove Mansoor to the gallows. Although those days are now no more, yet it is quite likely that people might begin measuring me with an undeveloped sight. I hope you will arrive at the reality by weighing me in the balance of your heart. Dear brother, you have taken into your heart my views expressed in the letters. Shall it not be regrettable than to ignore the writer thereof? No sooner do you form a will than the action thereof starts automatically. Ideo motor action. Do pray and try to get drowned in it to the extent that the begging bowl alone remains in the hand while the begging also is lost in unawareness. If you create such a condition, your prayer shall never go unheeded. Practice sobbing and weeping in love, which if it is not real, may be taken up artificially. Do this and see the result.
So in the last three sentences, sorry, he says that uh, even if it is artificial, uh, sobbing and weeping can be artificial and uh, it may still benefit in that sense. No, everything, that is what the... Conditioning... Uh, uh, really, the, that is how the mind functions, you know. You can use, if you have some idea about how the mind operates and if you know the qualities of the mind, it's functioning and all that, we can exploit it for our spiritual advantage. We have the power of imagination. Uh, and then uh, 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 with that imagination, uh, vikalpa, our imagination is very powerful to achieve our goals. Most of the discoveries in science are made with imagination. And with imagination, we can create feeling of love also. Yes. So that's why, otherwise, what is the point in telling... Uh, Begin your prayer uh, with a uh, uh, begin your puja with a prayer for spiritual elevation with a heart uh, overflowing with love and devotion. Right. So we so that means if, before we begin the prayer, we, we didn't have that feeling of love and devotion. So, but it can be generated actually. Right. So, if you maintain that thought, every thought has got a feeling also with that. Every thought has got a pleasant or unpleasant. Yeah, uh, unpleasant feeling. Suppose I'm thinking about master, it, it is a pleasant feeling for me. Suppose I'm thinking about war and all that, it will be an unpleasant feeling for me. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so that feeling is there and you hold that thought for some time, that feeling also will, will continue to have the effect on the mind. And uh, if you continue to hold that, then uh, it, it may translate itself into an emotion also. So it is, uh, that's how we use our mind to reach our goal. No? Right. So while the thought can be artificial, the feeling it will generate cannot be artificial. I mean, it will have some... What do you mean by artificial? Can you come on and tell me? In the sense that what Babuji is asking is, uh, even if you are not feeling it, you just think that it is there. No, no, you use the word artificial. What is the meaning of artificial? Artificial means it is not your genuine con real condition. You think that it is your condition and uh, you know you basically think like condition, that. Condition, how can you say it is an artificial condition? Is a feeling in my mind. That's all. Is a thought in my mind. How can you label it as artificial or uh, natural? Artificial or natural, I can understand this flower, this rose is uh, natural or plastic flower, artificial. In that context, you can say your mm -hmm. a thought is coming uh, thought is a mere thought. How can you use the term artificial for a thought? Thought is created by your mind and it is a thought. The nature of the thought may vary, the, the quality of the thought may vary, but you cannot term it as artificial. I will not, uh, it doesn't make sense. Okay. okay. So he is telling you how to create that feeling. Mm -hmm. If you don't get that feeling of uh, uh, love or a feeling of, uh, you know, regret for all the wrongs you have committed, regret for all the indiscipline which have made you, uh, you know, do things which have spoiled your own mind and spoiled the environment alone, uh, then uh, if, you, uh, uh, if you repent for the wrongs done, then, you know, then uh, that repentance causes a jerk in your thought waves and then divine force will come uh, divine is convinced that this fellow is really feeling uh, remorse for the wrongs done or uh, regret for the wrongs done. And then that feeling of remorse will be washed away by the inflow of the divine current. So then you become pure again. So we are, uh, he, is telling, he is giving you a technique of how to purify yourself uh, by generating these kinds of thoughts. So that's not artificial. It, it has got a real effect. That's what the 10th commandment seminar which will be holding. Mm -hmm. He says uh, the, the divine force will come and you'll be your, uh, your mind will be free from mala, vikshepa and avarana totally. Mm -hmm. uh, so you cannot bring in the idea of artificial here. Uh, no, uh, man. You can simulate. He is trying to tell you you can simulate that feeling of uh, love and uh, since the love uh, suppose you feel separation, you feel sad so if you practice sobbing and weeping, that will generate 
the emotion of uh, grief when you're separated from your lover and then that will become a powerful longing which will help you in your uh, link with god so it is more of a simulation so you of you are that. trying to create a condition in your mind which can, mm. which will generate the emotion of uh, uh, grief when you feel that you are separated from the beloved mm. then the feeling of uh, sobbing and weeping uh, uh, will become a uh, the feeling will come into your mind yeah got it. before that the feeling is not there so uh, we are trying to simulate that uh, trying to simulate thoughts related to that feeling by simulating thoughts related to that feeling the feeling uh, becomes real actually yes, yes. so yes. this is a common experience uh, uh, um, uh, like people when they laugh it becomes contagious you start laughing Correct. and you, you find a person who is very uh, um, uh, somebody has lost his uh, wife or child uh, Uh, and you go and meet them when they sob uh, you also automatically feel like uh, um, sympathetic uh, com uh, compassion you also start uh, crying and sobbing along with them it's a uh, before that it was not there that feeling comes so he is giving you a technique to uh, uh, develop true uh, attachment to god actually Yes, it is like as you said. It's more of a simulation than I think. Uh, you simulate, yes. and uh, the whole thing uh, boils down to this: what is your uh, motivation, and what is the intention? What is the sincerity behind the intention to touch God? Uh, that will color the whole uh, effort. Actually, how seriously you are doing it, how much you want it. Actually, like for example, I'll. i'll 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 just one minute since you uh, raise this feeling the idea is uh, we want to develop real love for god without that uh, it is not possible to succeed in controlling your mind and uh, for your benefit i'll just uh, read a small story this is uh, swami vivekananda is telling stories so i'll just read it so you'll get an idea what uh, how you have to this is a small story he says uh, you please listen to it a disciple went to his master and said to him sir i want religion the master looked at the young man and did not speak but only smiled the young man came every day and insisted that he wanted religion religion means uh, when swami vivekananda uses religion means spirituality only or uh, you want to have yoga you want to uh, have oneness with god that is his meaning of religion actually but the old man knew better than the young man one day when it was very hot he asked the young man to go to the river with him and take a plunge the young man plunged in and the old man followed him and held the young man down under the water by force after the young man had struggled for a while he let him go and asked him what he wanted most while he was under the water a breath of air the disciple answered can you hear me now yeah yeah, yeah. yes sir no. do you want god in that way if you do you will get him in a moment said the master until you have that thirst that desire you cannot get religion he is telling that master is telling until you have that thirst that desire you cannot get religion however you may struggle with your intellect or your books or your forms until that thirst is awakened in you you are no better than any atheist next paragraph a sage a great sage used to say suppose there is a thief in a room and somehow he comes to know that there is a vast mass of gold in the next room and that there is only a thin partition between the two rooms what would be the condition of that thief he would be sleepless he would not be able to eat or do anything his whole mind would be on getting that gold do you mean to say that if all these people really believe that the mine of happiness of blessedness or glory were here they would act as they do in the world without trying to get god he puts that question mm -hmm. as soon as a man begins to believe there is a god he becomes mad with longing to get to him others may go their way but as soon as a man is sure that there is a much higher life than that which he is leading here 
as soon as he feels sure that the senses are not all, that this limited material body is as nothing compared with the immortal, eternal, undying bliss of the self, he becomes mad until he finds out this bliss for himself. And this madness, this thirst, this mania is what is called the awakening to religion. And when that has come, a man is beginning to be religious. So that is the idea. So Babaji is trying to give us tips how to awaken that feeling of love in us for God. Yes, sir. Lord. This feeling of uh, uh, that uh, uh, toward the real goal of human life and the God is master is, is, is sitting in the uh, cave of your heart. That is still not a strong belief in majority of the people. As you, as you do more and more cleaning, as your uh, impurities uh, get cleaned away, then a clarity emerges. Then you start, uh, start really believing that peace is inside you. You don't have to search anywhere else. So uh, that is why in our system, Babaji gives extraordinary importance to purification, cleaning by the person himself and then um, cleaning by the trainer. So in cleaning what you do, your heart uh, is full of impressions, impressions of uh, any thought or any action you do, it forms an impression because whenever ego is there, every thought is an action and every action has got pleasant, unpleasant, and then um, uh, that forms a network. Now we are saying that all these uh, network which you have created by just being, by just not having the feeling that you are part of God, that is uh, avidya or ignorance, uh, you create all these uh, impurities actually. Now you are saying that you are, you are burning these impurities. You are not concentrating what is the nature of it. Every Raga Dvesha is an impurity. Every attachment is an impurity. So you are burning these impurities and throwing them out in the form of smoke from your backside. And in its place, the current from the master's heart is filling up your heart. And in a normal way, you just think and throw out the... You use your willpower. There is no role for master here, no role for God. You are using your own willpower because you, you are you, using your willpower, you have created these impurities. So once you do this cleaning uh, consistently, then you become aware of the peace which is residing inside you. Then the love for that will start developing. So every process, if you do sincerely, uh, what we have read in the earlier article, Babaji says, uh, to that extent, your mind will start enjoying more and more peace. Right, okay. Mild bondage. I am giving here in a short reply to your question on philosophy. As a general rule, every action, whether of body or of mind, must produce some effect, good or bad, whatever it might be. That means that there is definitely some effect of it upon the five senses. Now, the lighter the mental pleasure, the lesser shall be its effect. And consequently, the milder shall be the bondage. Mind you, every second we are creating uh, impressions. Now, we are reading uh, this book. This is also creating an impression in our mind, but happily this impression brings about purity in the mind. That purity will lead you to the goal actually. Right. <clears throat> okay, next we'll read. Dissolving soul. I wish every one of you to become contagious in a sense so as to cast a deep impression of yourself wherever you go. The effect may flow out from you automatically 
like a contagion. You write, whomsoever I saw was enchanted, whomsoever I thought about has been attracted, whosoever saw me was converted. When I am having such souls of for our mission, the mission is sure to shine. You want me not to forget you. I also wish not to forget in any way, my dear beloved. And for the fulfillment of this wish, you may conveniently take it for granted. There is nothing of the ego in you. And whatever you, your condition may be, consider it to be from God. I am much pleased with your condition. You are a true patra, a deserving soul. On the other hand, people come to me and go away, none taking me away along with him. You have really taken me away with you. Do write to me if your present condition turns into a hindrance in your work or becomes unbearable to you so that I may modify it. By God's grace, you will definitely get some peace and this shall benefit you much. You shall no doubt serve the mission immensely. When you remember me, you may likely be feeling me just close by. May God grant you steadiness and may your progress be rapid. You may finally prove to be an asset to the mission. What is to be done is to be done by you and your associates. I, I have, however, sown the seed of spirituality. The tree shall soon bear fruit, but it is now upon you all to look after its nursing. Thank God you have become a living message to your friends. That is enough for them to understand the importance of the mission. Do go ahead, sir. Go ahead. This Japa, actually, the idea here, it will come. Uh, you can do a kind of a Japa on those three ideas of the prayer. That means a real goal of human life. Human means it includes all humanity, including the Russians, Ukrainians, Pakistanis, Chinese, everybody. All, the, all human beings, good people, bad people, all religious people, everybody is human being. So uh, that idea should be there. And then... Um, uh, Master means all-pervading master. I mean, he's, there's no space where he is absent. He's present in every cell of your body. So that is the idea. And then uh, slaves are vicious, and then thou art the only God in power. So we'll read uh, with that background keeping in mind so that we'll start using these techniques, actually. Okay. <clears throat> Japa, I'm not opposed to Japa, but I do not approve of the ways in which it is generally practiced. Japa does not mean parrot-like recitation of certain words or phrases without any understanding of their real significance and without any collaboration of thought. See, this is all highly loaded, uh, Raghava. Sir. Uh, these are very loaded uh, words which require a lot of uh, contemplation. So he says, does not mean parrot-like recitation of certain words or phrases without any understanding of the real significance and without any collaboration of thought. See what words he's using. Okay, you read. read. 
<clears throat> so in our system too, Japa is sometimes advised when required, but it is of different nature and practiced in a in quite a different way. For example, Gayatri Japa is one of the essential features of general sadhana and is practiced by most irrespective of other Japas which might have been advised at times. The way in which it should be done is as follows. This you, uh, people have to concentrate on this now because I feel this can be applied to our uh, prayer actually, the prayer which he has given us. The Abhyasi is to sit in a meditative mood, repeating the mantra mentally twice or thrice, keeping in view the sense it conveys. He is then to begin meditating upon the sense. The words will naturally go out of his consciousness and the thought alone will remain in his mind. After some time, when he gets absorbed in it, the thought too shall vanish and nothing shall remain except absorbency in the prayerful mood. That is the proper way. Japa practiced in this way will be of highest value and immensely helpful to, spirit, to the spiritual growth of the Abhyasi. So this has to be practiced in this way. So important actually. Sir, uh, sir. Uh. Uh, some time back, we were uh, uh, understanding the centripetal and centrifugal force. Oh, no. uh, remember, uh, our uh, seed being placed in the causal body, uh. it works centrifugal and uh, the mantra recitation would be the reverse, uh, centripetal. That day, that way, we are no, no, discussing. Uh, uh, Ante, the, the, this is a way of nursing that seed, actually. Okay. So when a trainer, when he's duly connected to the great master, if he places that uh, uh, thought in the causal body, okay. so that will get uh, into a fruition into your conscious mind. And to get fruition okay. into the conscious mind, normally what happens, the samskaras which are there will okay. not allow this uh, seed to sprout forth actually. Okay. So suppose you're practicing uh, prayer the way he is described, Mm -hmm. Then you are really putting a real manure and water into that seed. It will start growing actually. Okay. Still it is a centrifugal only. You are putting water into it. You are nourishing that plant by doing this practice. All practices nourish the point. But if you do it the way he is describing, it is what highest value. Oh. Okay. Whereas in other systems, uh, if they don't have an access to a guru who, who can uh, transmit that impulse into the causal body, mm -hmm. for them it becomes a centripetal system. I agree it, with you there. It meant if it's not systematically... Not uh, systematically. The, the guru should have the power to, to uh, implant power. the uh, divine impulse in the core of the uh, psyche actually. Uh -huh. Which is the causal body. So suppose uh, if the guru doesn't have the power, then it is a centrifugal, centripetal only. Then if it, they stop practicing, ah. they will lose all the benefits totally. Okay. Whereas in, in our system, the seed is in the causal body. Right. And as for Babuji, that causal body, the seed will be present for, the influence of that seed will be present for three lives. At any time, if he thinks of God, that starts sprouting again. Right. That will not be lost. Okay. And that way, it's an extraordinary um, blessing if people come in touch with uh, Babuji Maharaj. It's, it's a blessing actually because it's a, uh, you, do, you don't lose whatever has been blessed into you because it's still submerged in the subconscious and the uh, deeper layers of your psyche actually. Whereas the other people, they go centripetal. And then the moment they stop this thing, it is gone. I mean, the, the benefit uh, of training is uh, lost totally. He, here, uh, I, I'm sorry, I'll just go a little more. 
it is the here the japa is meant it is with the prior what is given by uh, uh, is, uh, i am using the, prior. The, the the technique is described i use the technique i found it very helpful we are, huh. i am using it uh, for the prayer the way he has described okay. it in fact uh, he himself describes uh, when he says short prayer to say uh, um, uh, bedtime prayer but time prayer we are supposed to do like this only you you should repeat the prayer mentally twice or thrice and take the sense of that uh, prayer and try to get, get absorbed in that prayer and when you get absorbed in that prayer at the time you, you at some time you feel sleepy then you go to sleep in that prayer then what happens since you raised this point i will uh, at this point i will tell you very interesting thing uh, you see there is a difference between the thinking of uh, yoga and vedanta in ved in uh, uh, we have what is called um, in mandukya upanishad they talk about three states of mind jagruti swapna and uh, shushupti deep sleep shushupti. waking yes. dream and deep sleep okay mm. so deep sleep is treated as bliss by vedanta mm. and that means when you uh, go into sleep you are not conscious of your uh, physical health problems nor your mental health problems nothing will be there but then you are in a state of bliss is there but patanjali's uh, yoga system does not agree to the vedantic view actually he says sleep can be of three deep sleep state when you get up you may come with a feeling that you had a very refreshing sleep or you may feel that you had a uh, you know disturbed sleep when you come out i have not didn't get a good sleep or you may come out of sleep with the feeling that you are heavy and dull so the the three sattva raja and tamoguna uh, uh, suppose the tamoguna is dominating during deep sleep you will feel heaviness and dullness suppose rajaguna is dominant in deep sleep then you will have what is called uh, rest uh, you don't feel that you are rested actually but when satvaguna is dominating then you feel when you come out of it you feel refreshed and fresh and energetic that satvaguna do dominated sleep is what uh, vedanta talks uh, when he says uh, deep sleep is a kind of bliss but the thing is uh, modern science now uh, they have done a lot of uh, the thousands of people doing research on sleep and a lot of papers are coming up so when they go into deep sleep they have taken fmri images ecg images and all so many uh, networks are uh, very very active during deep sleep also so what happens when you go into sleep uh, before going to sleep suppose you, carry, you one idea is dominant uh, during deep sleep uh, your uh, your memories are strengthened actually suppose uh, if i say that uh, the what the uh, real goal of human life and i am yet but slave of wishes and then the what the only god and power if i say i go into that sleep the there are certain uh, brain uh, nerves complexes called thalamus and uh, cortical centers they this uh, this memory is strengthened and then uh, that becomes incorporated into your uh, neural network so there is a transformation happens during sleep so if you uh, pray properly and go to sleep all the six hours you are converted into a kind of a, a sadhana whereby you know your uh, uh, unconscious nature which is uh, subserved by the complex neur neural networks they they are they are actually working to consolidate this memory act and once this memory is consolidated that means this transformation happening act. so if you uh, take the vedantic view that means the mind is not working during deep sleep it is wrong actually uh, mind is actively working do, even in during deep sleep and we take advantage of that by uh, by saying by practicing bedtime prayer correctly actually and if you read his uh, um, uh, how to do the bedtime prayer he brings in the same idea of japa there also so since the idea of japa came i wanted to bring to your notice uh, how to practice it correctly yes sir a mind must be working otherwise recording on chitta will not happen yes it it, 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 it the recent research says that uh, 
the memory gets consolidated during deep sleep. Suppose anything of significance you have thought before going to sleep, it gets the many students without their knowledge utilize this technique. Suppose they 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 appear before the exam, they take notes, and then they try to uh, manana. They keep on. Uh, reviewing the notes in their uh, time and then go to sleep. They do well in exams because that memory gets strengthened during sleep. Actually, Many people use this without understanding how the uh, brain is working to um, achieve, uh, you know, accomplish uh, academic uh, success actually. One small extension of this one small query, sir. No. The the total absorbed state what we have in dhyana, uh, can we relate this to turiya state? Turiya is nothing but uh, uh, you are in total, a you are in a real state at the time. You are oh. not aware of your uh, not aware of your own awareness also. Fully absorbed state at least temporarily. You know, absorption there uh, in yoga, it has been described, several stages are there. You can think uh, in terms of, uh, in uh, yoga, word used is uh, asampragnata samadhi. That means your awareness of you as a subject and awareness of God as an object and the process of thinking which goes into the act of meditation, all three merge and uh, you become totally unaware of everything. So that is called asampragnata samadhi. You can say that state is turiya state. But in our system, we don't talk about Asampragnata Samadhi. We talk about Sahaja Samadhi. Sahaja Samadhi. Uh, so you have to understand that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we'll stop here then. Uh, yes, Vivek. Sir. Yes, sir. So there's so many points which will be useful for our practice actually. Anybody got any any further? Uh, they want to comment or anything, or they want to share anything which they find will be useful for the group. Uh, namaste, uh, brother. Uh, Hare Krishna here. Ah. Uh -huh. Jerks and Navy Jerks could go Baga was soon. Imagine, I imagine Gadu when I started into the system last uh -huh. four, four and a half years. Jerks Ustu Potu Adi sign of what actually? Adi Yemante, the human being has got uh, five layers of existence, what is called uh, Anamaya Kosha, that means physical body. There's what is called Pranamaya Kosha. Okay. Uh, Manomaya Kosha, Vijnanamaya Kosha, Anandamaya Kosha. Mm -hmm. And the spirit or God inside you. He, he exhibits his uh, presence through these five kosha sanamata. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, pranamaya kosha ne dokutuntu nanamata. That is involved with the physiology of the biological living being actually. Mm -hmm. So, suppose the heart is beating or the nerve currents are running and mm -hmm. then uh, digestion is happening. All that is happening because of the prana shakti which is present in our body. Okay. So this prana shakti has got a very uh, intimate link with the, your thinking and emotions and feeling. Mm -hmm. So when uh, your system is getting adjusted to higher reality, uh, the uh, the prana associates the mind. Uh, if they are not in harmony, you will feel the jerks. But once you do the cleaning process properly, the jerks will disappear. Actually. Okay. 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 So it is a kind of a resistance your system is offering to the inflow of the spiritual force into you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you uh, uh, you uh, practice more uh, uh, as you continue to practice, it should subside. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. But sometimes you also feel like when, I mean, when you pass through that jerk and then once the jerk is over, you also feel more uh, lighter and more... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Correct. When you feel lighter, there will be some minor 
not getting dissolved on mata so then you will feel relief afterwards right yeah 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 I when uh, certain uh, thought patterns which are uh, impure when they start getting dissolved it can give you a jerk and followed by some relief that is general experience of all people who are meditating yeah yeah correct correct yeah uh, i have seen If you're very pure, you'll not even feel any vibration or uh, any. Uh, you don't feel the awareness of your own physical self, also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If there's nothing, we'll meet again. Uh,